that's nice steamy hot water. G'day folks, welcome to another Forex Adventures video. I like nothing more than having a nice hot shower in the bush at the end of the day or first thing in the morning. For those of you who've been following my adventures, you would have noticed that I have a hot water system and shower built into the FJ and I've had a lot of requests for more information on how this works. So if you'd like to build yourself, not buy, but if you'd like to build yourself the same system that I've got, Keep on watching. So when we're overlanding, we are quite often traveling to very, very remote areas and we have to take all of our food and water with us. And quite often uh, that water needs to last for a week or two. So you have to be very, very careful with your water usage. Nevertheless, I wanted a shower system built into the car and I think I've achieved something really, really good. So I had three design criteria when I was creating this. Firstly, the method in which you heat the water had to be very, very efficient. Secondly, it had to be very conservative in water usage. And thirdly, it had to be hassle-free. So. I think I've achieved all those three goals. Let's go have a closer look. So step number one, how do we create hot water while on the road? So there's many ways of doing this. You can heat water on a campfire. You can have a gas powered water boiler. You can have a, a billy on a, on a gas stove. Uh, you can have a um, electric water boiler. So all these methods are fine, but they all have their downsides. Campfires, for example, uh, if you're, we're in bushfire season at the moment, and there's a complete fire ban here in Australia. Uh, there's bushfires everywhere, so can't have any fires. So campfire is out. Additionally, there are a lot of national parks that prohibit open fires. So campfires are not a reliable way for creating hot water for having a shower with. Gas powered water boilers, yeah, they're okay, but you know, you have to carry a big bulky device and you have to have a gas canister. And there's a lot of paraphernalia associated with setting up one of these gas powered water boilers. And it's just a pain in the backside. Uh, and they're quite inefficient at heating water and they're quite inefficient with the use of water. Uh, often you have to mix hot and cold water together and it's just wasting water. So they're not very good for remote uh, outback travel. If you're going to a caravan park where you're near, some, uh, near a water source, they're okay. So essentially the way that I've come up with to heat hot water is something called a heat exchanger. Now a heat exchanger has been around for many many years at least 20 30 years and it is a very very simple system it's got no moving parts the way a heat exchanger works is you essentially have a cylinder imagine a, a bit of uh, hose pipe that's about that thick in diameter and within that you have two copper tubes that are spiraling next to each other throughout this uh, cylinder now each one of those copper tubes has an input at one end and an output at, it, at the other end. Now the way it works is you basically plumb the heat exchanger into your, the hot water that's circulating through your engine. And so that hot water from the engine is always passing through the heat exchanger and going back to your radiator. So that's your source of hot water. So once you've been driving, for, if you have your engine running for 10 minutes, that's hot enough, you've got hot water. If you've been driving all day and you've stopped at camp, your engine will remain hot for hours. You'll have hot water. So it is a fantastic source of heat. Now, the other input on the heat exchanger is for your cold water. You basically pass your cold water through there. It spirals through in the opposite direction to the hot water going through it. 
and by the time the cold water gets to the other end of the heat exchanger, which is instantaneous, it is hot. So my car runs, the engine runs at 87 degrees Celsius. And that's typical of, of pretty much all cars. They're all within that rough uh, temperature range. So I've got a method of producing instant hot water just using the residual heat from my engine and that is utterly reliable and rock solid that's never going to fail that's that just they just work so they're really really good now the downside for heat exchangers is you have no control over the temperature of the water so right now I've been driving the car and my engine temperature is at 87 degrees Celsius when I run water through it I will have 87 degrees Celsius water coming out the other end. Now that's far too hot to have a shower with. But I have a twist. So I've come up with a way of controlling the hot water that comes out from your heat exchanger. And it is brilliant. It doesn't waste one single drop of water. As soon as you open up the shower, you will have the correct temperature for showering with and you don't waste a single drop and it is it is fantastic let me show you so let's go through the components of the hot water system so i've got a choice of using an onboard water tank or an external water source and that external source could be a bucket or a hose down to a river it could be whatever so i've got an input on underneath the uh, driver's side door, which I will just show you. There is my input. So with that hose connector input, I can either connect my water tank to straight to that input, or I can just plug in a hose and roll it down a hill to a river or into a bucket. So that's very, very easy. I just plug in the water source that I'm going to use. Now the water source makes its way to a 12 volt pressure sensing water pump. Now pressure sensing is important because when you go to have a shower and I've got a, a trigger nozzle, as soon as I turn the trigger nozzle on, the water pump will sense a decrease in pressure on this side of the plumbing and it will start pumping. And when I'm done, as soon as I release the trigger nozzle on my shower head, the water pump will sense a pressure increase and it will stop pumping. So that makes it very, very efficient in its use of water. You don't have to fiddle and turn a tap on or off. Note that I'm using blue hoses for cold water and red hoses for hot water. Now this system is called John Guest. Uh, I'm not sure whereabouts in the States you could get them from, but in Australia there's a uh, marine supply shop called Rotec Marine and they sell John Guest connectors and hoses. You've got these uh, angle connectors and straight through connectors and whole all sorts of different uh, connectors and basically you just cut the plastic pipe and push it into the connector and that will never ever come out. If you want to take it, take it apart you have to push this little ring down and then that will release the, the hose so that will never come apart. So it's a very very good system. The other benefit is this is hard plastic and is rated to very high temperatures and very high pressures. Even though this system is not a high pressure water system, it does use uh, high temperatures as at 87 degrees is, is fairly high. So you should never use standard garden hose. That will just simply not withstand the temperatures of the hot water or the engine heat. That will just perish. So it's important that you use hose that is rated to the high temperatures that we're dealing with in the engine bay and the hot water. So the hot water that comes out of the uh, heat exchanger makes its way over to a temper valve. Now a temper valve is similar to a mixer tap that you might have in your bathroom. In the olden days you would have a hot tap and a cold tap and you would then turn them both on and, and mix left and right, bit of hot, bit of cold, until you get the perfect temperature. Well that's fine if you're in the city but that's extremely wasteful when you've only got a 20 or a 40 litre water tank and you're out in the middle of nowhere. So what a temper valve does is it works like a mixer tap where you would then set the temperature on the mixer tap 
and then you just basically turn it on or off and the water is always at that temperature. So a temper valve has a hot input, a cold input and a mix output. And on the top of the temper valve, if I take this little cap off, there's a screw and I can twist the screw left or right and set the temperature to my desired temperature. Now the temper valve also has a sensor in there so that it will not let a single drop of water out, the, out of the mix output unless it's at that perfect temperature. So what that means is when I mix my 87 degrees hot water with my cold water together then I am guaranteed of the correct temperature coming out the other end and I haven't wasted a single drop of water. That together with my uh, trigger nozzle and the pressure sensing water pump makes it a very very efficient uh, shower system. You're not wasting a single drop of water, you're not wasting any water heating it and you're not wasting any water when you're using it. So once the nice warm water comes out the other end of the mix output of the temper valve it makes its way along that red line to the other side of the car and I have a hose connector underneath the passenger side door and I simply plug in my shower nozzle and I just have a shower. It is that simple. So all that's left is to make having a shower a completely hassle-free experience. So all I need to do is plug in my water rose and this by the way has a little knob on there that you can uh, increase or decrease the water pressure. So if I'm camping near a river then I increase the water pressure and I have a really nice strong shower. But if I want to use the onboard water tank and I'm in the middle of nowhere, I twist it the other way and then that just basically trickles the water uh, and you can go anywhere in between. So I can be extremely frugal with the water. So I can have a, a shower with easily less than a, less than a litre of water. Easily. Uh, it's a really great system. So hassle-free shower, I'll show you how quick it is to set up and have a shower. All I need to do is plug in my shower rose. This is here. Plug that in. I have my <coughs> quick ensuite, which is a uh, pop-up privacy room. Now this is made by Quick Pitch, and this was one of the first ones on the market. A lot of people are making these now. Cab have one called the Shower Cube. Uh, the Bush Company have one. There's a lot of people making these. But essentially, that's it. All I have to do is press the trigger nozzle and I'm ready to have a shower. So essentially that's how the system works. Now I'm not a plumber but I've managed to work out how to make this work and I've put a new twist on an old idea and this way I'll get the perfect temperature of water every single time and it just works really really well. Uh, very very efficient use of water, very very quick and easy setup with the, the shower curtain. All I need to do is plug in my shower rose, open that up and away I go. It can't get any simpler. It, it works really really well. So there you go, I hope you've enjoyed that guys and if you have any questions please let me know. Uh, if you would like me to build one of these for you uh, let me know, I'd be happy to do so. Uh, as always please comment, I love reading your comments and uh, I will see you in the next video. See you later guys. Inside, I've got everything I need for having a shower. And away I go. Oh, it actually works. It's quite cold. The water's warm. <laughs> the temperature is quite cold though.